Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on Cisco Flex VPN. You can find a complete list of Flex VPN videos on our website by clicking the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. First of all, we'd like to welcome you guys to our first video in our Flex VPN video series. In this video, we are going to spend some time learning the underlying protocols of Flex VPN, which is IKE v2. It is very important, in my opinion, for us to understand the protocol as it will help not only in the configuration but also troubleshooting. So, with that said, we are not going to dive into the lab just quite yet in this lab video, and we're going to focus on the presentation. Internet Key Exchange Version 2, or also known in short as IKE v2, is a protocol used to establish a channel where the VPN peers can securely exchange connection information and identity in order to bring up IPsec connection. Needless to say, IKE v2 is a fundamental building block of Flex VPN, so it is almost a prerequisite to be familiar with the protocol before we start looking into the Flex VPN configuration. Although IKE v2 can also be used with other security solutions as well, like DM VPN. Now, what I've done is I have created a diagram that will help us understand the protocol a little bit better. And this diagram you can mostly find in many IKE v2 protocol documentation. Now let's go over at the high level how the Ike v2 protocol works. If you look at the diagram, Ike v2 starts with what is called Ike SA init state, right here, Ike SA init, where the initiator will send a request message containing these information, and this is considered message number one. Right, look at the detail of the payload. You have HDR, and you can see the key explanation on the right-hand side here. HDR is the packet header, or Ike header, which contains the security parameter index, or SPI the version of the protocol and some flax values. Then you have the SAI, SA stands for security association. I just signify it being sent by the initiator. SAI is the crypto algorithm that is proposed by the initiator. They want to use to protect the connection. And these are things like encryptions and hash algorithm. Then you have the KE, which is key exchange. This is the Delphi Hellman group. And this is a method of exchanging key in a non-secure channel. And the last value is a nounce, which is just a random value. Assuming there is a network connectivity between the initiator and the responder, the responders will receive the first packet and then decide and return the proposed crypto that is acceptable. Right? And that will be chosen from whatever the initiator has proposed. So since the two sides has to match and agreed on the crypto suite, and whatever the responder is decided on gets returned to the initiator, and this is considered a successful Ike SA init. So the Ike SA init can involve as few as two messages, as you can see, one request and one response. If the peers cannot agree on the crypto the first time around, it might go back and forth a few more times to complete the negotiation. Based on the agreed crypto, each peer derives a shared secret called SKC, which is used to generate encryptions and integrity protection keys, right? And that will get used for the rest of the communication. At this point, you have a secure communication channel, and anything communicated after this will be encrypted and integrity protected, right? And the way I am depicting this is that the red lines is considered a non-secure communication, and anything that is shown as green lines are being protected by the encryption and integrity check. Once the Ike SA init is completed, you move on to the next round of negotiation called Ike Auth. Ike Auth is where the peer authenticates each other by exchanging their identity. And this can be one of the three possible options, which are pre-share key, digital signatures with certificate, or EAP authentication. Once again, looking at the payload of the Ike Auth request. You have the packet header, right? Then followed by an SK. An SK is just telling you that the payload is being encrypted and authenticated. Inside the payload, you have the ID, which is the identification with the subscript or lowercase i indicates it belongs to the initiator. An optional certificate if the responders wanted to perform certificate-based authentication, they would have sent a certificate request on the SA init response. Right? That's when the initiator knows it needs to present the responder with a certificate. 
At the same time, you can also request for the responder certificate if the responder happens to use certificate as part of its identity as well. And then the entire message is authenticated with the authentication attribute. And then the last three options right here, this is where the peers, in addition to the identity exchange, will also negotiate crypto for IPsec SA with associated traffic selector. So the SA is another set of crypto suite that will be used to protect the IPsec connection. Okay, so again, same description, SA Security Association Crypto Algorithm. And then the TS is used to match the traffic that gets sent into the VPN tunnel. All right, so ICOTH also involves only two messages at minimum for pre-share key and the certificate. If you use EAP for your authentication, there will be a few more messages, typically a total of six messages. But at the end of like auth negotiation, the exchange produces one security association and each peer is now ready to start encrypting data. And that's the last message the responder sent to the initiator. It contains pretty much just similar type of information, the responder identity, the certificate as an option as part of certificate authentication. Everything gets authenticated and the traffic selector. So as you can see, IKV2 can build you an IPsec VPN in as few as four messages. So it is a very efficient protocol. After the IPsec tunnel is created, there might be more exchanges as part of a continued operation. And one of those is called Create Child SA, right? As a follow-up right here. Create Child SA exchange is used to create new Child SA or to rekey existing SA depending on what's happening at the time. We saw that the original negotiation produces one security association. But if you happen to need additional SA just because you may have multiple traffic selectors, and that usually happens when you have multiple ACL lines in the crypto map, Peer will use the create child SA process to spin up additional SA. Right? Remember, each of the SAs only protect the traffic as defined by the associated traffic selector. Anything in addition to that it would have to be a separate SA. Right? Traffic selector is nothing but a matching of traffic based on the source and destination IP. And at some point, your existing SA may expire and need to be rekeyed, right? because each SA has associated lifetime, whether it's based on the amount of data or the actual time duration. Right? The create child SAs also takes care of that. Then another type of message exchange that might happen during the lifetime of your IPsec connection is informational, right? And this is used by peers to exchange additional control messages like event notification or a liveliness check as part of the dead peer detection feature. And this is pretty much the basic of IKE v2 protocol, although IKE v2 has quite a few feature extension that might add a little complexity with a few more message exchange. You can see that fundamentally, it's not very complicated, and that's the whole reason for the IKV2 to be created.